Okay guys, welcome back. I uh, want to show you a little idea we've been working on. So this was the 8 row wide cultivator, uh, Massey Ferguson 440, that we brought home from Iowa. Uh, so last summer I had a problem with weeds in the row itself. Uh, the reason I had that problem is because of my planting technique leaving ridges and when I went out and rotary hoed uh, the rotary hoe was not able to get all the way down in the row so uh, you guys know I'm not a big fan of blind cultivation uh, I try and bury my weeds early with the Danish tine but uh, in talking with Daryl Henderman he gave me the idea uh, to use the little bitty spike tooth there and I'll try and stay out of the shadow and point it out to you but the little spike tooth so he gave me that idea and uh, you know the way things worked out we were able to get this uh, eight row wide cultivator and what the eight row wide cultivator gave us was it gave us these things right here line up with the row there you'll see that those pieces of stock are longer uh, they reach out farther than a 30 inch row because they had to reach wider for those 38 inch rows. So we cut the wings off the cultivator, welded it back to a solid rigid toolbar, and we've got it, our six rows set up now. And we are going to work on implementing Daryl's idea. So that gap right there on my other cultivator, you know. I showed you that gap there being 14 inches, 12 to 14, and that's what I like to run. That allows you speed uh, when the crop is relatively young, having that wide of a gap, and then you're rolling the dirt in. Now, what we're gonna do with this cultivator is right here next to the row, we are going to put those little spikes. And instead of having a 14 inch gap, we are going to pull that gap down and experiment and figure out what the right gap will be to just barely bubble dirt up right on the row. And we'll be able to accomplish that because this style of 440 has those wheels on it that are quick adjust and control the depth. And so regardless of how uh, high my ridges are, I will be able to go out in the field very quickly, uh, set it so that little spike is only scratching the surface right on the row and it will act in effect it'll act like a row crop cultivator but it will give you the action of a blind cultivation you know like the Einbach tine and so that's the big brainstorm that we're working on and we're trying to implement uh, a majority of the time uh, I will be able to do my usual techniques. My usual techniques gave, gave me weed control probably 80% of the time. But there are situations where the rain comes too soon and you get a crust or you need to clean in the road, like where I spread manure and I got a flush of weeds and I need to more aggressively clean in the row. Yeah, there's the noon whistle. So anyway, what we're going to do, uh, we've just got everything assembled. We don't have any teeth on yet. You can see the teeth on this cultivator are in poor shape. But we have the 30 inch row. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to set those bars there so there's just enough gap that uh, the row units will clear each other. And then that will allow me in the field to change the shanks and put the shanks where I want them. So we'll probably leave, you know, maybe a three inch gap in between those two bars. Uh, we'll get our spike teeth on and uh, we will be able to roll in the field. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about is I do like the idea, let me get out of my shadow here. I do like the idea of the uh, uh, Einbach, the time weeders. And so we will run this cultivator this year. We're going to put the little spikes on that first rank. Uh, the second rank will get the little two and three quarter inch shovels and they will spread out a little bit. So if, if that is the row where my uh, dowel rod is at there, the spike will run there, pull that point back. Uh, that next rank, we will put the little two and three quarter inch, what I call the duck foot. But we will probably, you know, if that's the row, we'll probably put the duck foot right about there, pull it out another two inches, or whatever the maximum adjustment is on that rear bar. You see that rear bar is only gonna give us about an inch and three quarter out. But we will pull that as wide as we can pull it. 
And the last idea is going to require a, a, a rather substantial investment of money and some more fabrication. But if that doesn't work, on this style of cultivator, you see that point right there? I am going to uh, weld a pipe and buy Einbach tines and have them run, you know, theoretically uh, two inches outside the row at each point there. Put a bar across here like that. Fabricate it with those pieces of flat iron and then have some kind of adjustment mechanism like a sliding bolt and a clamp that will allow me to get the height on the iron box right. But put Einbach tines here running between the rows. And uh, there's a pretty good possibility that I will be able to achieve the best of uh, both worlds, you know, inter row cultivation and blind cultivation. And to be able to do it, you know, right when the beans are emerging. Uh, typically, you know, my beans emerge ahead of the weeds or right with the weeds. Uh, this is not going to save you when you have the situation where it rains the night you plant and your weeds are actually ahead of your crop. In situations like that, you'll probably still have to consider going back and uh, replanting depending on the vigor of your beans. But uh, what this machine will hopefully give me is in that situation where the weeds are running even with the beans, but the beans are a little bit tougher at that stage of their development. They're quite a bit tougher than, you know, little bitty baby foxtails or, or little water hemp. So, anyway, working on another cultivator, guys, for a special application. But uh, we had some time in the shop and we started working on it. Assistant has come back. How was breakfast? Okay. Good. So that's what we're working on, guys. Hopefully... Hopefully, uh, uh, you know, I like to keep my budget low and I like to like to recycle. And so I think that uh, potentially a good idea is coming together. Thanks for watching.